All right, we're going to head west. They're going to be crazy at the moment over there, Reach. They're turning on their own. We're going to one of the only sane people left in Western Australia. That's our good friend Paul Hazelby, former Dockers champion. Hello, Hayes. Good day, boys. Great to be back on air with you. I'm uh, I'm glad you gave another chance after last year. I was too bullish on the Fremantle Dockers. I'll let you down, but we'll go again this year. Oh, oh, no, uh, really? oh no, no, really? Uh, really? <laughs> You're like Jared. We just spoke to Jared Healy. When was that? Uh, last, last week. week. Yeah, and he was a little bit bullish on the Fremantle improving. Let's just jump straight to the chase then. Well, to me, you've lost more than you've got in this year, so I don't know how you improve. You've got Oscar McDonald, if you want to hang your hat on that. He's a delisted free agent. Uh, Jeremy Sharp from the Gold Coast is an SSP player. And you lose Hamling, Liam Henry, Lockie Schultz, Nathan Wilson struggled, but and Travis Collier. So how are you improving? Oh, I just think there's still more upside with these young kids. It's pretty similar to the Adelaide Crows, I reckon, at the moment. Um, we don't have the scoring potential as the Crows, but there's a lot of guys that have been around for a long time. And there's a guy called Nathan Fife. It was pretty mm. handy back oh, in yes. the day. He's yeah. back into that midfield. And there's a few players that probably haven't seen him at his best in the last three years, and they are just amazed at what he's doing. So that all goes well. They've finally got a forward line. I think that gives me some confidence. Whether or not they're all going to be superstars, I'm still not sure. But since Matthew Pavlich, well, probably since the history of Fremantle, mm. there hasn't been three key forward targets to kick to. Jai Amos is going to be a star. It's going to take a bit more time, but he will get there. We know that Luke Jackson's building nicely. And Josh Tracy is the other one. They're talking up a little bit from inside the camp. I'm still not sold, but at least they've got three targets to kick to. So with all those... Elements, I think, on the back of 10 wins last year. Now, that's only one less than the mm. Crows. And everything went wrong from the get-go. I think they can get that number to 12 and 13. All right, let's put it on the table. Uh, the elephant in the room. Let's get the elephant out. Hey. Did you sell the farm for Luke Jackson? Uh, we did. We did. But I thought it was the right call because he's a gun ruckman. I thought it was the wrong call to sign Sean Darcy for ah, that length of contract. Ah, right. So okay. that's the concern. Like, I think they can work together really well. And certainly Jackson showed a bit of promise as a forward. He was on track to kick 25 or 30 last year before he went into the ruck. But it's it's about maximising the $1.9 million for the two. And I just thought they rushed it because he's not a free agent until the end of this year. I would have loved them to take their time, have a look to see if it can work and then make the best decision going forward. Because Logan McDonald's out there, and to try and sway him, the money that could have been used and added to that salary could have been the clincher to get him over. Well, Paul, I'm still confused as to what Justin Longmuir was trying to do last year. Is that confusion going to end this year? Uh, uh, no, it's not. Um, I think he's going to go backwards, back to what worked for him in 2022, and it was all built on defence. Oh, on no, that two, I, I didn't want to hear. That I don't want to hear. Yeah, no, you don't. And, I, and I'm not a believer that that's going to work. Um, no, I don't believe of, it at all. In the long term, from a premiership perspective. But I think with this group, getting some, you know, contest has been the, the method they've spoken about a lot over the preseason, mm-hmm. getting that right. Because they got they got smacked out of centre bounce a lot last year. That's yeah. with Fife going back in. So that's going to help a little bit. But I think it is going to be a boring style. They're not going to be oh, no, a big fast ball movement team. So what's the point of having three key forwards you if you don't loop, move the ball quickly to them? Mm. Well, it sort of worked for them, didn't it, the year before? And I know people will argue that, you know, last year the game changed a bit with what Collingwood did and Craig McRae. But mm. um, that's the big watch is the forward line on them. I'd love them to go faster. But when you, when you um, are under pressure like Longmuir is, you go back to what has worked for you as a coach in the past. And that's what he's doing. He's backing in himself to get this team back in finals. I love that Nat Fife has gone back to the midfield. If his body's right, he's only 32. He can have a look at what Scott Pendleby's doing. He's got plenty of footy left if his body's right. You talk about your defence. Hayden Young's one of the best defenders in the competition, but he's going to the midfield, isn't he? Yeah, he is. He'll start in there as well. He might start on the bench and come on as that extra midfielder with Sarong and Brasher and Fife, likely to be the first three in there. Yeah, it was a move they made last year, which was the right call. And I agree with you because it was made last year when there was no Nathan Fife fit mm. in that midfield. So they put him in there late in the year and it certainly had some instant rewards. I think they'll keep going with it. But I do think down back, if you look at the trend in the competition, some of those classy halfbacks are worth their weight in gold. And they, they've got Jordan Clark, who's had a really good pre-season. Brandon Walker's back in. Corey Wagner showed a little bit last year as well, but mm. you know, they're not big names, are they? So there's a concern there, and maybe at some point 
they may be forced to put Hayden Young back down there. Now, Hayes, not being controversial here, we've been through it, but do you feel like, what does it feel different with your state not being quite as relevant as it has been for a long period of time? Yeah, it hurts. Mm. And it's boring when you work in the, the yes. business we work in as well <laughs> because yep. by about Bloody round 11 last year, it mm. wasn't looking like it's going to be final. So, uh, unfortunately, West Coast, I can't see them moving too far up the ladder, but I do have some hope for Fremel. I think they can get in and around that top eight on the back of a few things that I've mentioned. But uh, we need something over here in the West. All right, we'll get to your top eight. That'll be interesting. We just did it with... Uh, did we do it with... Uh, Liam Pickering. Yeah, Liam Pickering, yeah. So have we seen the end of the dive of West Coast or has it still got some bad patches to go through? How many injuries are they going to get? Okay. If they yeah. get more than seven injuries, then they haven't got through it yet. Right. Like, it was ugly last year. And, look, they've had a better preparation. More of their players have done the preseason. But Matt Flynn went down uh, on the weekend. He was looking solid as the new Ruckman coming mm. in to replace Nat Nui. He's out for 10 to 12 weeks. Uh, McGovern didn't play, but it looks like he'll be okay. Jack Darling's coming back into training as well. Actually, their best 22 looks okay, but once it gets into numbers 28, 29, 30, there's a big drop off at the West Coast. What's the language of Adam Simpson being like, their coach? Um, Better, better, Mm. but language and saying things are one thing. Mm. The next part is actions. Actually giving some confidence and faith and opportunity to some of these young kids Mm. maybe ahead of some of those players that he's backed in for a long time, those 2018 Premiership players. That's what I'd love to see because he's spoken about turning the wheel. He's spoken about giving up opportunity to youngsters. But let's see it. Let's see some tough calls made on some players that are getting towards the end. Mm. All right. Roach wants to ask you, there's a bit of drama happening in the Wild West. Now, I doubt that you had as many back page photos as Harley Reid did. We had a few. But... What is going on with Peter Sumich in the West Australia? Yeah, so Pete's been riding for the West, I think, for the last two years and mm-hmm. been aggressive too, really giving his opinion. And they've yeah. really utilised Peter Sumich as their pin-up boy of the West Australian with his articles. So um, he was well, going to submit an article about Harley Reid mm-hmm. where it wasn't as favourable. It was more about he's not Chris Judd yep. because, of course, Summer was there when Juddy rocked up. True. And Juddy was terrific from the get-go. And I probably agree with some sentiment of that. I think there were some comments in there about puppy fat that potentially needed to harden up with his body a little bit to to get to the elite level and the rumour is that they said no we don't want to go with that so Peter Sumich then said no well I don't think I want to write for the West Australian this year. Okay why do they hire him if they're not going to accept his opinion? Well, you know, if you, the rhetoric of the West Australian has all been about Harley Reid since he got yeah, drafted. It's yep. just been crazy over here. And look, it's got to be been over the top. From my point oh, of view, yeah, well, way are. over the top. Yeah, okay. Absolutely. Uh, and look, I am a, a columnist too of the West Australian yeah. too, so I'm mindful of that. But, you know, every second day, I think we see him in the paper. And yeah. unfortunately, the kid came out and played and look, he's still got work to do. It's not going to be instant for him. He's not going to be Dustin Martin no. from the get-go. And he's got some work to do alongside his teammates. Hey, so you would have seen the Sam Powell Pepper mm. hip and shoulder. Uh, your views on that and where it'll end up? I think he misses. I think he misses mm. three weeks. Yeah, mm. I think they'll be pretty keen to send the right message. And, and I think clear the guidelines for all the players Absolutely. at the start of the season. I hate to see change, but what, what, what you do now in AFL is if you approach the contest like that and you do make contact, I think you are vulnerable. And look, he can argue that the sling tackle was coming his way yep. and he wasn't expecting that. But I think the way that he approached it is going to put him in danger. I reckon they'll be happy to take the three. We've got a feeling it'll be four. Mm. Uh, here's a text that's come through. Bumping used to be pure artwork. The timing of the bump, the noise on impact, the resulting play created, the resulted opposition injury, the opponent's naive ability to clench and protect themselves, all that is dead. Yeah. That's from Modbury Mac. It was a big part of the game, but uh, it has certainly gone. All right, Hazer, we want to know how you think this season's going to unfold. If we can start with your top four. Oh, I haven't really sat down and had a good look at this yet because I just wanted to see the last week of competition. But, gut, and I'm not getting feel. too carried away. Gut feel, Collingwood, Brisbane, mm. Sydney, GWS. Mm, don't, mind top that. Four. don't mind that, Paul. Nope. Carlton Ooh, yeah. up there as well. Oh, Port Adelaide yeah. up there as well. And I think the two emerging, that are my, my riskier ones, 
Are you Adelaide Crows and my Frio Dockers? No Melbourne. No Melbourne, no St Kilda, no... Uh, yeah, you got Carlton. Dismissing Melbourne. Too much be- going on at Melbourne. That's Too much I going on. That's what I thought. Yeah, um, and they're, they're probably it's the going to be a good season, lads. You look yeah. at all the KPIs, they were probably the best side in the final series, even though they went out in the straight sets. Yeah. yeah, I just did that activity right there in front of me. And as you said, no Melbourne. I was a bit surprised with my effort too, but uh, <laughs> it's not an easy activity to do, is it, lads? No, no, it's not. Oh, no, it's, it's no, tough it, this year. It, I, I'm a, as excited as I've been for a footy season, I think. That's the uncertainty is uh, absolutely enormous. Yeah. Um, yeah, Frio. I think that's ambitious with the top eight, but I understand your passion, Paul. Anything else you can update us with that's happening over there? Oh, a couple of injury concerns. Michael Frederick for Fremantle. Mm. He's your little hamstring. Heath Chapman's gone back to Qatar to see the specialist over there. It seems a lot of those hamstring injuries and those people are heading overseas. Um, Joy Amos, a little bit sore today with a quad, but he should be okay. Mm. Outside of that... Everybody else is pretty good. So new teeth for Ruben Jimby on the weekend. Oh, um, yeah. Hit that he cops. Yeah. And a big watch this week, I guess, on McGovern and also Jack Darling for the West Coast Eagles yeah. of whether they'll be fit for round one. All right, okay. Well, you've returned the favour. Your boys are over here this weekend. So on Friday night, it's Port Adelaide against Frio. Yeah. That gets underway at 7.30 at the Albert and Oval. Then on uh, Saturday, it's West Coast v Adelaide, 2.40 start. And, of course, the uh, first game of the year for our teams – Port Adelaide take on uh, the West Coast. That could be an easy kill. Should be. Look forward to both games. All right. Look forward to chatting you throughout the season, Paul. Good on you, lads. Appreciate it.